Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm doing the non-fiction on booktube tag. This tag was created by Olive over at Book Olive, who we all know is the queen of non-fiction on booktube, but the idea behind it is it's a way to introduce yourself as a non-fiction reader to the booktube community so we might be a little bit easier to find because it's definitely we have a bit of an urban legend status on booktube. There are indeed non-fiction readers among you. So the idea is that hopefully we will answer these questions, get a bit more known for our booktube read, uh, our non-fiction reading, and people will be able to find us a bit easier. The first question is how much non-fiction do you read? I set myself the goal of reading 20 non-fiction books this year and I'm definitely going to hit it. I think I'm on like 16 or 17 at time of filming, although god knows when this is actually going to be posted. I generally read, I'd say non-fiction makes up anywhere between like 10 to 15 percent of my reading and actually that's something which I would like to change in the coming year. I want to make it a bigger percentage of my reading. So I historically have read non-fiction um, pretty much all my life but probably with about the regularity that I have now and it's something that I would like to increase because in the past month in October I read a lot more non-fiction than normal. Um, I probably had like a ratio of like 50-50 and I really enjoyed it. So I think my goal is to try and get my ratio up to like 25 to 30 percent of my reading being non-fiction which I think is fair. Question two is what kind of non-fiction videos do you make and do you want to make on booktube? So at the moment most of my videos are TBRs um, or recommendations videos and the odd book review here and I just like to increase the number of recommendations videos and book reviews I do. One of my most popular book reviews on my channel is a non fiction book which caught me totally by surprise when that happened and I think that there are so many good non-fiction books out there that deserve their own book reviews and also I really like doing very specific book recommendation videos on very specific topics and I think that that would really naturally lend itself to non-fiction so that's something that I would like to do a bit more of. Question three is what is your favourite subgenre of non-fiction? Oh difficult. I like a lot of medical non-fiction where um, and kind of biological non-fiction. I do read a fair amount of science books but definitely in the realm of biology rather than chemistry or physics. Uh, I read a fair amount about art history, more accurately about kind of modern art history. Um, history in general is something that I'd like to read more of. It's something I think I do read a decent amount of but I'd like to read more. And I also really like those books which are like um, day in the, not day in the life of, but like giving you a snapshot into a particular lifestyle that you don't personally have. So examples of this like, examples of this like The Secret Barrister, which is talking about the inner workings of what it's like to be a barrister and a lawyer. Um, I have a book which is amazing, it's from a porn director, so fascinating. Uh, you've got um, This Is Gonna Hurt, which is the diary of an NHS doctor. Like I like it when we get to see a different person's life who has a completely different field. So <laughs> What's your favourite subgenre? Just have all of them that I read. There you go, have all them all. Uh, do I have a favourite non-fiction book? I thought about this one really hard and I have a bunch that would probably be on a similar ranking but I think for sheer branding purposes on my channel alone I have to pick Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs by Steve Broussat. It is no secret on this channel that I love dinosaurs. Olive actually mentioned it in, in her tag video where she tagged me. I, I, like It's literally becoming a bit of a, a hallmark of mine. Olive reads birds, Emma reads dinosaurs. It's, uh, it's very iconic. Technically Olive reads dinosaurs as well because all birds descend from dinosaurs don't quote me on that I don't know if that biology is correct or not I need to read more on the topic um, but anyway this book <laughs> this book is fantastic as the name suggests it covers the rise and fall of the dinosaurs as a kind of animal um, and it looks through the Jurassic Cretaceous uh, Triassic period I think I put them in the wrong order don't quote me but it's absolutely amazing I really love Steve's writing style there's all sorts of fun snippets about the various discoveries and how like not only is it about the history of dinosaurs but it's also kind of a bit of a snapshot history of archaeology as a subject and a field in its own right and that's really cool and fascinating so much fun to read would heavily recommend question five is what do you think keeps people from wanting to read more non-fiction i was thinking about this the other day actually and the the kind of standard answer that a lot of people come up with which is definitely something i've said before as well quite a lot is like um, it's it's an association with school, it's boring, there's concern, yeah, concerns it's going to be dry and boring. But I think also a lot of it links back to why people 
read and why people have reading as a hobby and I personally really enjoy learning which is why non-fiction appeals but I also use reading as a form of escapism and I think that's very very common among readers and I think there's a misconception from fiction readers that you can't escape into a non-fiction because it's not got that same world building and storytelling and I just don't think that that holds true I think that like a really good non-fiction can capture your imagination and keep you hooked just as well as a good fiction honestly if anything it's slightly better in some ways when I think back to the books that I sit down and blitz in one go because they've hooked me and that I can't put them down, more often than not they're non-fiction rather than fiction because there's something really engaging and captivating about somebody being able to tell a story that is genuinely true and teaches you something along the way. It has a bad rep probably linked to school as well but I think the reasons why people approach books and reading in general um, can be some of the reasons why. Question six is why do you like non-fiction? Like I touched on in the previous question I like learning stuff. I, j I always have done, um, I'm the kid who takes a bunch of like online courses in random subjects and was always reading stuff that was outside of the syllabus. I just, I really enjoy the process of learning. I love having random facts. I love like finding out how the world works. I find, I have all sorts of, I go through phases of like enjoying different kinds of topics and getting really obsessive over different subjects and just wanting to know more about how they work. In the same way that as well going beyond info dump like content information I also really enjoy learning different skills and different processes so it's not limited to literally just like sitting and reading a book about a particular era and learning a bunch of facts I also really enjoy upskilling in that way if that makes sense and I think that non-fiction clearly lends itself to both. The question seven is what's a non-fiction book that you read because of booktube? Okay I don't know whose channel it was I'm so sorry it was from non-fiction November last year if I can find it in my comments history I will put it down below but someone recommended It's All a Game by Tristan Donovan. This is a short history of board games and is one of my favourite books. This very nearly made the cut. Dinosaurs did pip it to the post but, but this one is fantastic. As it says, it is a short history of board games going all the way back to um, the or origins of chess and how the games evolved, how board games interact with like our cultural norms and what is important in society, the rise of board games, the competitive nature of them. I just generally, it's fascinating, so cool. And this is a perfect example of a subject that, okay, I play board games and I do really enjoy them, but it's such a lovely niche subject to just find out a bunch more about and the way that it interacts with the world. And you wouldn't think your stack of board games that you have on a shelf can have so many different linkings and connotations but there's so much more behind them because there's so much more behind everything and that's why I love non-fiction is it just opens doors to rooms you didn't even know existed because it like there's just you can think behind everything in life and it's so cool. Eight what's the best non-fiction book you've read lately? Ooh, ooh, best. My favourite one most recently is The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. This is um, making waves at the moment. It is nominated for a bunch of prizes and for good reason. Um, but basically this is the untold story of the five women who um, were murdered by Jack the Ripper and it is both simultaneously a look at their lives and our obsession with serial killers and our uh, like tendency for society to just wipe out uh, the victims and have them be nothing more than kind of numbers um, to prop up the serial killer but also it functions as a really interesting a kind of social history on Victorian it the on the Victorian era specifically with the working class and it's basically also making the argument about um, to do with kind of slut shaming and what's happened to these women because they were labeled as prostitutes from very very early on and there is actually a startling lack of evidence that any of them or any bar one was um, an active prostitute at the time of their death so really really well researched well written incredible and I definitely recommend the audiobook it's phenomenal question eight no nine what are some of your non-fiction reading goals? Well, we're kind of coming up to the end of the year. So looking on to the next year, I'm probably gonna set the goal of reading 30 non-fiction rather than 20. Um, and I think that will be a good goal to try and increase that to get the percentage that I want. Um, I probably am gonna expect a uh, lower number of books read next year because I'm gonna be reading longer books. That's a separate goal that I'll talk about at the end of the year. But I think because of that, that means that by decreasing it and increasing my non-fiction, I should get the ratio that I want. 
um, but that's pretty much the only goal I have really with it. Some of it would also be just kind of actively making more non-fiction content on my channel as well. It's something I think I do forget about at times. Uh, question 10 is your advice for incorporating more non-fiction into your reading diet. I think just don't treat it as anything different to any other subject or um, genre that you try and get into. You know, if you were to try and get into historical fiction, for example, you would probably start with a plot that you already know that you like. Um, you'd look up a bunch of recommendation videos. You'd maybe try a shorter one first or a critically acclaimed one first um, to kind of ease yourself in. And you'd give yourself some specific goals to try and hit so that you don't get scared off from the first bad one. Um, in the same way, I think you should treat non-fiction in the exact same style. You know, there are non-fiction covers so many different kinds of subgenres that to say to turn and be like, I don't like non-fiction is just insane because there's just so many out there. You know, cookery books and, and food writing is non-fiction, sports biographies are non-fiction, you've got memoirs, you've got books about music, art, like all of history ever <laughs> of the entire world, social issues, political issues, hobbies, like there the, the list goes on and on. Science, like any of it I'm sure there is one out there that will suit you and it's just about finding the right one and doing your research and hopefully things like this tag will help to make uh, the non-fiction side of Bookchieve a little bit more prominent so that it makes it a little bit easier to find. And also don't get scared off by the first bad book. I think what can happen when trying to broach any new subject and any new kind of genre is uh, you become and I do this as well, this isn't a specific dig at anyone, this is something that I find that I do, is your tolerance for a bad book isn't very high. So when you read a book in a genre that you don't normally read, if you don't enjoy it immensely, you kind of write off the whole genre. Whereas actually if it was in a genre that you do read a lot of, you'll read a mediocre book, but look at it more favorably because you know the tropes and quirks of that genre. So you're happier to kind of let little things slide. I think every genre has its own quirks, tropes, in jokes things to learn about it all of its different kind of subsections and culture to it and it can be very easy to read one and dismiss it if you don't find a new personal best favorite ever um so yeah don't be too quick to judge uh, and this is something it's it's advice that i really need to take in my own way for other genres i probably could be less critical of ya and read a little bit more of it i'm sure there's ya out there that i would enjoy and i do definitely avoid it just on principle and it's something i don't really want to do anymore um, and i think the same should be brought to non-fiction when when kind of joining that table bonus round is give some recommendations of non-fiction booktube channels that you love so uh clearly olive who is the originator of this tag is amazing go watch her channel of course you watch her channel already who wouldn't um another one that i think is fantastic classic for non-fiction is Harriet from Harriet Rosie. She reads a lovely, really wild, like weird range of non-fiction, um, reads a surprising amount of like architecture, just has a bunch of sort of oddball random stuff in there. She picked one up recently that's about like the history of um, Japanese cherry blossoms, just so cool. I love her channel, uh, her dog's really cute, definitely go check her out. Uh, another one who I think is amazing and is like a little unsung hero of booktube is Amy from Amy Gets Lit. Her uploading schedule isn't very regular because of um, she's going through a lot of the moment in her personal life but her back catalogue is fantastic, any new stuff she comes out with is fantastic and she just has such a like measured, controlled and like clearly well thought through way of approaching reading and talking about books. Like sometimes, and I'm sure you guys know this, like I don't know what's coming out of this mouth, I witter, I ramble, it's not very well formed beforehand but Amy has such a meticulous and like very deep way of looking at things and everything feels very measured and purposeful and I really love her content so definitely also go check her out, she's awesome. In general, I def I've just recently subscribed to a bunch of new people who read non-fiction because of non-fiction November TBR videos. I went searching, I found a bunch of you. So any of those that kind of immediately jumped to mind as people who I've been enjoying their content with recently, I will chuck down below. But like, I've only just started watching you guys in the past few weeks. So I'm sorry, I don't have your names immediately to hand, but I'll chuck everything down below, go check them out. And clearly just like search this tag and find more people. Um, in terms of tagging, I tag anyone anyone who wants to get involved in non-fiction because we need more of you come on if you read non-fiction join the club it's great we have cookies we don't i'm lying anyway i'm gonna go <laughs> i have a science book recommendations video to film and dinner to cook so have a wonderful reading week and i'll chat to you soon bye